My support, support group, when I joined, um, was very welcoming and there was only a few members, but I walked in there and I felt like I'm, I'm with people that understand what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. There's no judgement. Everyone that comes to the meeting are all at different levels of their Parkinson's journey. My name's Lynn and I live in Christie Downs uh, in Adelaide and um, lived down here for, well since our son was two, so he's 48 now, so about 46 years, which is way too long to be in one place, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my mobile phone wakes me up about seven o'clock and that's when I have to take my first lot of medication. If I've had a really bad night or a bad day the day before, I I'm, I'm just don't feel ready to get up, so I, I stay a little bit longer. When I first told people, um, family members, especially my son and my daughter, they were a bit shocked and I could tell they didn't really know what Parkinson's was. Parkinson's disease is a, a disease or a condition. A lot of us Parkies would prefer to call it a condition. Um, it's a, a condition in the brain. It affects uh, mobility. It affects your thinking. Um, at the advanced stages, it affects your swallowing, your balance. Um, you control your um, tremor and um, other physical factors are, are affected. And you, it's a progressive disease. It's maintained by medication. At the moment, there's no cure. We didn't set out to work on a project for people with Parkinson's, but it became one of the many positive surprises along the way. My name is Dr. David Hobbs, and I'm a rehabilitation engineer and senior lecturer at Flinders University. For people with Parkinson's, there are many symptoms that can make day-to-day -day activities difficult. Targeted rehabilitation is one way we can help maintain the ability to perform everyday tasks. It was a bit of a surprise for me, and I was surprised that I was surprised because I worked in aged care um, for 15 years, and I absolutely loved my job. I did. And some of the people I cared for had Parkinson's, and so I thought I knew everything about Parkinson's. And when I started getting symptoms that I noticed, I noticed the tremor and uh, I noticed that I was banging into doorways on the left-hand side and I wasn't quite well enough. I didn't feel well. I felt that there was something that's not right. And even my mum, I never said anything to her. She said, there's something wrong with you. I said, mum, there's nothing. I'm just getting older. You know, I'm just getting, I'm tired. I'm I'm just a bit clumsy. She said, no, there's something wrong with you. I went to the doctors, the GP, and told him about this. So he just sent me off um, to see the neurologist. When I saw him, he got me to walk down the passageway in the hospital, turn around and come back. And it was as quick as that, you've got Parkinson's. And I said to him, I can't have Parkinson's. I care for people with Parkinson's. I would know, but you don't. I think for Tolly, for my husband, I think it was a lot harder on him than on me. I'm the one dealing with it. 
but he's the one who's on the outside and he has to get an understanding of what I'm going through. And it's hard, it's hard for families, yeah. Even though the medication was working well and I knew that I had Parkinson's, um, I was still in a little bit of denial. Um, and I read a book um, just after that and that turned my whole thinking around. And I thought, right, now I've got to learn about this and I've got to deal with it and um, it's going to be part of my life for the rest of my life. It won't take over my life, but it will be there. So I'll need to deal with it and just get on with the job, basically, of looking after myself, yeah. yeah. I describe myself in reflection as an accidental engineer. And I say I'm an accidental engineer because when I left school and went to university, I did a physics degree because I really enjoyed physics. But then I realised that physics was not giving me the people interaction. And so I, long story short, enrolled in a biomedical engineering program. Within biomedical engineering, there's a field called rehabilitation engineering. So when I experienced it as an internship in Canada at a world-renowned paediatric rehabilitation centre, which set my path to then when I graduated to know that I wanted to work in biomedical engineering. And that's what I continue to do this day. The Orbit project was, in essence, the design of an accessible, computer gaming system for people who have a hand in pen. The original target population we had for this project was children with cerebral palsy, where they are more likely to use only one of their hands, we call that the dominant hand, compared to using both hands, where it means they have their non-dominant hand involved as well. A really positive and insightful aspect to come out of the research was seeing that we started off with this initial focus on helping children with cerebral palsy and then we had these voices calling for a trial in people who've had a stroke, so the post-stroke community. And now this trial we're going to be doing with people with Parkinson's disease to try and improve their cognitive function. And they say that design is best when it's simple. And I think we've achieved that with the design. So the dimensions of Orbi are such that you can have a five-year-old size hand or you can have an adult hand and you can still use it. So the ergonomics built into Orbi means it can be applied to anyone. For people who experience an impairment, rehabilitation is the process of trying to improve their impairment. So improve their mobility, it might be the way they walk, the way they use their hands, it could be other aspects of their daily life as well. But if you break it down to its best sense, it, it is work. And so this is why gamification or games in health or other areas where you can actually improve motivation and improve engagement have really caught on. Sure, it is a therapy at the end of the day, but it's actually adding something more on top of that. You're playing a game, so you're moving an avatar, you're flying, you're doing this. It just breaks down that first issue, engagement. Actually getting them to do it. Rehab to me, it's very important with good rehab, you can get bad rehab too. The people that do, that help you with your rehab and have an understanding of your problem, you can get back your life and get back to a point where your life isn't as affected as much as it would have been without the rehab. My husband and I were in the city at uh, Parkinson's SA and I spoke to Olivia who is the CEO there and she said oh you're the right person that I want to see I was going to ring you she said and she then she was telling me about David's project with Orby. I first met Lynn through Parkinson's South Australia she came to Flinders University at Tonsley and we had an Orbit gaming system set up and we asked Lynn if she could do some, a very initial use, utility testing. The ultimate aim with our Parkinson's trial is to deploy the gaming system, so our Orbi controller and our, our software, but this time the game is now going to be targeted towards specific aspects of their cognitive function. And so within the game we will actually start to exercise and start to push into areas that require the person who's playing it to have short-term and possibly long-term memory attention, executive functioning, choice, and things like that. David explained to me about the game, and that's when I first met Orby. 
how to use him and where to, what to do. And I found I was very uncoordinated at first. But then I got into the game and it takes the Parkinson's away. I wasn't stressed about it anymore. I was right into the game. I felt at ease with it and um, it just took everything away because you're focused on something else and it was easy to manoeuvre um, around. Once I got the, the gist of how to move Orby, I thought it was great, you know. I thought this is going to be so good for people with um, movement disorders and, um, yeah, I could have sat there for hours and done that. If this gaming catalogue works correctly, it might actually have a positive influence on their cognitive function. The positive influence could be it could improve it or it could actually stop the decline, which again is a positive outcome because it means that it actually preserves the state of where it is. That's the ultimate aim of that trial with people with Parkinson's. And what we asked the children to do was to jump in here to play the computer games. Everything you do and your day and your week and your, your, your life is a is pieces of puzzle of your life. And uh, the gaming and Orby um, is part of that. It's just another piece. And um, if you don't put these pieces together and, and make up a picture of your life, then your Parkinson's will just, like a big black cloud, will just come over you and you've got nothing. I've always wanted a tattoo, but there was reasons why through my life I didn't get one. So at the age of 65, I decided to get one and it had to mean something to me. As soon as I had decided, I said to my husband, I'm going to get a tattoo. He freaked out and I said, and it's to do with my Parkinson's. It does symbolize, I believe, um, Parkinson's because that vine is also has got little um, little notches in it. And Parkinson's um, disease throws little notches at you when you're going through your journey. The heart is just because, I guess it's because I gave up a job that I loved. And the dove, the swallow, is um, a symbol of hope and healing, everything positive. The, the Orby is, is a great little gamer. I, I loved it. It just sits there nicely on the table. There's not a lot of movement that you have to do and you're focused on the game, you're using your eyes and um, it's a good thing, yeah. The only thing is that you're actually probably sitting a little bit too long. <laughs> That's because you're so Yeah. <laughs> and you think, yeah, all right, I'll put the dinner on in a minute, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, I'll make the bed in a minute, you know, yeah, yeah. David, he is a lovely person. He's very much into what he's doing and he wants to do things to help people. He's very passionate about it. I feel I have this uh, responsibility and that if I can help, then I should be helping. It's amazingly rewarding and it, it makes me smile all the time. It makes me smile. We've made some really great friends, which I wouldn't have made before. I've grown in my knowledge of Parkinson's and other movement disorder problems and how people deal with them and how I dealing with them. It's made me realise that we're all vulnerable, it can happen to anybody. I think I can deal with things better because of this. Yeah, I think that's what Parkinson's has done for me. It's opened up a lot of doors really for me, yeah. There are some fears there I guess, you know, but I don't let that take over too much. I don't want to be my Parkinson's, I just want to be myself with Parkinson's. Mm.